Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for this um, online roundtable hosted by Framer Framed um, and co organized by Framer, Framer Framed and the University of Amsterdam on resistant bodies, um, featuring the three artists, Jian Wu, Wong Kai Ying, and Hao Yi Ting. So, this series is um, a part of a longer series called Now Water Can Flow or Can Crash, My Friend which again, as I mentioned, was co-organized by Framer Framed and the UVA. And this is a series of online, offline roundtable discussions, interactive workshops, screenings, and lectures to explore notions of art, archive, and activism in the context of East Asia and beyond. To begin this program, I thought, um, in lieu of kind of a conventional introduction to uh, the theme of um, this roundtable, I might begin with a poem by the South Korean poet Kim Hing Suk, which I translated into English. Um, and, um, and it kind of touches upon some of the themes of collective action and also the sort of um, the ambiguities um, that might come up with being um, a resistant feminist body in the East Asian context. So this is by Kim Hing Suk and it's called Happy New Year. Like a cake we gather around, we're so close. It's as if the only thing that can pass between us is a knife. We reveal a cross section, like even teeth seen through a broad smile, we're lined up one by one. We wait, we look up at the clock on the wall, our mouths form the same shape and shout in unison. Ah, 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 as if stretching ourselves awake. Let's get ready. The world has something to it, like a fuse getting shorter and shorter, as if to say, I'll show you what an end really is. The countdown begins. The blue screen crackles. Suddenly appears the president wearing her folky, folksy traditional dress. And then there are cheers, exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. So um, for this particip uh, participatory panel discussion, um, we'll be talking about resistant bodies. And I thought that Kim Hing Suk's poem is a good reflection of the ways in which um, um, the troubled um, and difficult position that feminist activists and artists often find themselves being in. Um, for a long time, of course, the idea of a female president in South Korea was one that feminists, of course, longed to see. And then seeing sort of the troubled history of uh, you know just one woman becoming president doesn't necessarily solve the problems of um, sexism that runs through a patriarchal um, society. So this is one of the themes that Kim Hing Suk's poem touches on. Um, and I think that this is especially why this particular moment, 2021, is one where it's really important to think about um, how to best position our feminist bodies in sites of protest and resistance. Mm -hmm. So for this participatory panel discussion, Framer Frame has invited artists and activists from different East Asian locations to tell women's stories in the sites of resistance. And during the discussion, the panels will reflect, the panelists will reflect on their personal and collective memories with protests, as well as their attempt to recollect, preserve, and transmit these memories through their artistic practices. By organizing this cross-national conversation, Framer Frame hopes to highlight the importance of artistic practices in the cultural memory-making process and memory mobilization for the progressive future. I'm now going to introduce the three panelists. Xi'an Wu is a play director, writer, actor, visual artist, and activist based in Seoul, South Korea, who believes in the power of narratives and movements of bodies. She formed an artist collective, Anti Moving Club, in 2020, and its performance arts revolve around revealing the senses of others' worlds. Hao Yi Ting is an artist and researcher who lives and works in Taipei, Taiwan. By blending imagery and video with embroidery, how challenges the way we identify imagery in everyday life while reconfiguring an otherwise prosaic visual experience. She is especially interested in the role of women in the workforce. She rearranges and recreates economic production modes in different social sites while exploring more potential methods beyond these modes. Wong Kai Ying is an artist and writer based in Hong Kong. She received her BFA degree from the Chinese University of Hong Kong in 2013. A keen observer of the art community and society, Wong critically reflects on the various social, cultural, and gender issues today through using a wide range of media from Polaroid photography, collage, screen print, printing, painting, performance, to social media platforms. 
Um, and I can also I should also say that I've had a, it's been an extreme pleasure to get to know um, the works of these three artists um, in preparation for this roundtable. And um, you can find quite a bit of their work documented online, also on Vimeo and YouTube. And I really suggest um, um, doing so. They will also be show, showing some clips of their work, of course, um, today. So each of the artists will present their work for approximately 15 minutes. And then there'll be a brief period after each presentation for questions. Um, and so we really encourage you to put any questions that you have in the chat, um, because we'll draw from your questions as well um, um, in the conversation with the artists. After all three artists have presented, um, we will then hold a roundtable discussion. And again, you're welcome to contribute questions or comments um, during this period um, via the chat box as well. So um, without further ado, because I'd rather I'd like to spend most of the time uh, um, getting a chance to see the artwork and the presentations of the artists, I'd now like to um, turn to um, Kaying and ask um, Kaying would begin her presentation. Hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, Wong Kaying. You can call me KY. And to start with my sharing, I would like to share uh, video clips of my interviews during the pandemic time uh, last year, which it's just uh, some uh, depiction of how I, well, have changed my views on art making and also start some territorial works these two years. And this is some ideas. Uh, recently, I come up with why I still make art today. So I'm going to share this. <clears throat> Intentionally, 所以他打到這些階級也是有另一種高潮 Gumdomtongue 我要分享我的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有些是我以前的作品。有
So what will you, how should I behave in the future if I continue to make uh, false portraiture? Because, you know, some years we have to uh, produce a new uh, mug shot for identity card, for car license, for any shot of usage in the society. But actually you can demonstrate your own rights and your performance in front of the cameras. But there's uh, a lot more artists uh, are working on identity photos. But um, the reason why I put these photos on daily objects, it's to uh, remind myself every day and also remind others when I use these products that uh, this is an act of how authority manipulate us and how and gender identity it's being created through different requests by the society. So to start with, um, what happened uh, <laughs> to me when I start doing work that is related to feminism, it's because I made these photos in 2012 during the last year of my study uh, in Hong Kong. I myself thought that if there's no big deal, and also I think in many countries standard, this is just a usual nudity that I collab with another artist friend. But when these photos were planned to, were this set of Polaroids were planned to show in Hong Kong, well show in Chinese University of Hong Kong, the campus gallery, the school, uh, it's, very furious and request me to take it down. And it draws attention in among students and also media that uh, they discuss what is the standard and what is obscene and why not, why nudity is not acceptable to be seen in a campus. So this is the very first beginning of me to make art. And you can see there's a lot of discussion and many media coverage on this incident. And this is some of the other pictures I've shown, which is not that irritative in my standard. But uh, these make many people angry about uh, how should, you know, our university graduates should behave uh, proper and should not be uh, naked in a public. And this is the the come the following works I made for a school annual exhibition, and these also bring a lot of argument and uh, brings me a lot of troubles as well. As you can see, this is it is hard to tell in the photos that why this is not acceptable in the school, but if you look closer, that will be part of the work consists of. Um, close up of our uh, sexual organs both female and male because this is only one only part of my context because i'm talking about different things that makes people obsessed and sex is only one of the elements but only these small section these small parts of the work makes big troubles in the school museum and there's a, I have been protest and also argue with them. And they finally decided to put the first ever uh, warning sign in the museum to forbidden people to look at this work. But ridiculously, people can actually still see it when they step into the museum because uh, they request me to take it down, but I refused. So they kind of like, uh, and it's not allowed in the museum. So we put signs and warning here until I put the works down. So this, uh, this quite sum up my, uh, the background of why I keep doing uh, related works even after my school life. Because during the time when I first study art, there's a lot of hidden rules that uh, I found which I did not realize in the past that there are so many limitations and so many taboos that it's not accepted even in a metropolitan like in Hong Kong. And I think that there are, this, and I later learned that this is the same or more or less worse in other many uh, Asia countries. 
So, but when Hong Kong is pretending to be an international art hub, there's uh, actually a lot of conservative uh, rules and regulations to constrain what a female should do or what an e artist should behave, especially when they label me as a young female artist, they expect you to do something else to please them. So I decided not to make some words that it's pleasing others, but instead I would like to disturb them or uh, to raise questions. This is our work I recently made for a global exhibition. It's a uh, non-binary movement started in London to attract people's awareness on um, eco-friendly, e like the environmental protection issues. And I'm talking about uh, our how female body, it's uh, important in uh, many industries and, uh, but uh, female bodies are often considered as a fortune or an excess, like a fetishism, instead uh, of being treated as a human or a person. So I made fortune cookies, a very stereotype Chinese symbol with my vagina photos and to distribute them on site to remind them that, uh, and with a slogan with ain't no your fortune to remind them our bodies in different industries, even in a, under the capitalism, under production, under all sorts of laboring, female bodies, it's not an excess and we should be respected. And also I put, I made videos. This comes with another videos that I put camera inside my vagina to uh, refuel the slogan. You know, the fortune cookies, small notes. I just put it in my own vagina and then take a video shot of it as if when you break the fortune cookies and found the messages, you will find my messages with my body too. So you will see the videos here and also the product image of the pins. And another project I did a uh, few years ago, it's about internet witch hunting because it's, it's I would say Hong Kong is too uh, uh, misogynous society that you will find a lot of hate, hateful or uh, hatred speech uh, about how female or how women should behave in Hong Kong. And we know there's a term, um, internet witch hunting is to capture these uh, seemingly inappropriate uh, behavior of women and punish them online. So I tried to investigate this international hand witching and collab with uh, a sex toy stores in Hong Kong, which a sex toy stores can set. This few years is better, but back in the days when I make this set of work, it's still a taboo and people will slut shame on women who openly claim their sexual desire. So I work with the sex toy shop to get case from their customers of how women uh, embrace their sexual desires. And I found that there are a lot of um, SMBD tools are actually developed from the torture tools during witch hunting period, like in 80 centuries Europe. Or these torture tools are being used in different prison or cells or uh, prosecution. But then uh, we people transform them into BDSM as a tools of seeking pleasure. So I took the relationship between these uh, different usage of the same tools and uh, developed this set of work to put them into spaceman box and also collab with the images of how witches are being punished, were being punished in 80 centuries. And this is one of the installation I made for the sex toy too. It's a big mirror that every customer will see themselves when they enter the shop. Uh, and it's mainly, uh, this is 
a very simple installation to emphasize the consent of if a woman kneel down and then with uh, her uh, lower body facing the viewers, if the girls, if the if us, it's asking for it, or uh, I am not asking for it, or I am now asking for it. The power should be executed by ourselves, and I, we are the one who say yes or no. It doesn't even when we are kneel down and the upper body facing other, it doesn't mean that we are requesting some kind of treatment. So this is just an interactive installation with the sex toy shop before. Uh, the customer answer and I want them to ask themselves or ask their partners if they get the consent to do something else first before they get into an uh, in intimate relationship. So sometimes I do sharings in different countries about works and also um, feminism or case studies. This is uh, very um, um, meaningful experience for me when I did a sharing for the Shanghai Biennale in 2019. And uh, at that, uh, before that, I worked with some Chinese feminists, and then I already know that they have big pressure and backlashes. And feminists and feminism, it's a forbidden word to mention in China because they think that this is a uh, uh, feminist activist, it's organizing something, an organization for gathering or, uh, or even the action itself, organizing, is illegal in China. So feminist, it's very dangerous and it is forbidden. So during this talk, I, I don't, I really didn't know what to do before it started. I got censored of my script and I cannot mention feminist and feminism, these words, and we need to replace these, in, uh, these topics with, um, you know, shameless or shameful or being shamed, but you can never talk about feminist and feminism. And I feel great pressure when I step into Shanghai and I'm being um, surveillanced and also checked uh, many times. And then until the moment when I step on the stage and the microphone is on, we didn't know that it can happen. And on the stage, I can see those people from the cultural bureau of the China government is checking if I am talk according to the script they censored. So this is a very powerful experience for me that the right of women, it's not uh, a must have item or uh, are, it's, it's a privilege in many country, I would say. Something when, something we expect that it should be born to or we deserve it or it's our right. It's not that legit, it's not, it's not legal in many places. And this is my first hand experience that the first time I feel the pressure of my Chinese feminist friends and what, uh, what, are they uh, dealing with? And this is a work, and this situation happened the same in Macau as well. This is a recent group show I participated last year, and they want to promote sex education, but the government thinks that it is not appropriate even mention the word sex. So we can only talk about these issues with artworks, with very ambiguous and thick artworks. I made a bed sheet set with uh, silk screen lilies and also some red ink and also blood as if it is hiding the dirt we let uh, on bed sheet, our blood dirt, different kind of blood dirt. For example, um, menstruation or uh, wounds after sex or any different kind of blood from women bodies that being left on the bed sheet. And I tried to merge them with a beautiful print. And on the bed sheet and uh, I collab with a choreographer to dance with my bed as if they, as if um, she is using the bed or our, to represent or symbolize our movement on bed. And I put 
poems and also uh, uh, some statement on the back sheet that you have to use the back sheet and look closely so that you can read the message of the taboos or the punishment of uh, when women left blood on the blood sheets or being shamed of uh, or being shamed as dirty and filthy when they found women's blood on objects. So this is the way how we how we carry out sex education in an environment that does not uh, allow you to talk it directly. But in Hong Kong, I I'm very I, I feel uh, I appreciate there are still spaces. For example, I work with a lot of NGOs like Ring Lili and also Women Federation. Um, to carry out different kind of workshops and talks and also exhibitions to raise the feminism awareness in Hong Kong. So this is the uh, this is one of the work I made for uh, Me Too movement exhibitions last year. Uh, this is our I collect the cleaning tissue after makeup and I make a calendar each day. Each day when I clean my face with the uh, with the towel, I keep it and then I put dates on it and then a story of it. For example, this is Madalena being killed by stone because she is being uh, uh, she because she was a prostitute. And this is the stone like with the name, the bad name that people put on women's every day. And this is an interaction, interactive works I made for our, uh, our help center for sexual violence victims. This, they can take the paper cup until two sides of the people uh, hold it straight. The line can then transmit the sound. So this tells the story of consent again. Because this show it's for primary students to, you know, really young toddlers. So I have to elaborate the idea of consent in a very playful and easy understanding way. So if you only hold one side of the cup, you can't hear what the other side said until both of you agree to hold it tight. So the sound can be transmitted. And also for my curatorial work, I work with the Women Festival in Hong Kong to carry out a non-binary um, exhibition in Hong Kong and include a lot of different artists and also uh, activists in the show to tell their stories of gender and also uh, their role in the society. For example, babies and moms. And, uh, and this is a very interesting word. Uh, I choose, it's um, an artist, the artist uh, is a whole scene tone, and then she read uh, dictionaries when she is insomnia, and he found that, and she found that there is a lot of gender issues in different version of dictionary. For, for example, all the bad words, examples, sentences are using women as the subjects. For example, screaming or, or crazy or angry, then the sample sentence must be that woman is crazy, something like that. But for example, mother nature, uh, we know that this is a very feminine word, but when it translates it into Chinese, they said it's, it's a male god image. So they try to uh, eliminate or lower the powerful image of woman. So this is a word, she depicted those very interesting sentence and tell the stories. And also this is an artist called Bobby and then she, she is being criticized as uh, small boobs in different places. So she display her small boobs on the floor and let people to step on it. And some uh, poster artists, street art artists. And this is an example I really like. Uh, this is Ting Ting. And uh, she is a uh, drag in uh, Hong Kong a daily drag, I would say. And uh, she didn't go through the sexual, sorry, the, uh, the surgery, but she is a lady when she got dressed up and then she took a lot of beautiful pictures outdoor to uh, celebrate 
her identity. And then, but no one considered this is art when she put it online and she re received a lot of backlashes. But I think that her actions and her creations empowers a lot of people to show their loves or their affection on uh, their, uh, their appearance or their gender and their role in the society. So I collabed with her and said that, what if I would put it in an exhibition and really took it serious on how much effort you have paid to stand for your identity. So this is a very touching work, I would say. And um, I also work with different women labor and then to encourage them to uh, start their own business, even they have their family in Hong Kong. And most of them are mid-age women and uh, they retired already from the last job, but still they can strive for their uh, ideal life. So we encourage them to start it first with art creation, because if you can make artworks, you can do anything else, and then we can do it together. And then we open a pop-up shop to showcase their uh, products and also their works. And, and, uh, and also curated for the Golf Institute in Hong Kong um, as a curator of the Queer uh, German's Fox Hong Kong version. This is a show we bought from the Berlin Gay Museum, but these are all uh, materials we, the curator in Gay Museum uh, took it from their archives, talking about the queer history in Germany in the past 50 years, because last year's is the anniversary of the uh, Stonewall riot. And then to talk about the gay history in Germany. But for example, they, they invite different, they invite a curator, local curator in different country when the, tour, when the exhibitions go on tour. And each curator I invited to introduce their place, the gay history of their place into the exhibition. But when I communicate with the Shanghai side and obviously they cannot tell much because it is prohibited to, to you know, uh, put it on the table, to put the gay issue on the table. But of course you can do it underground. You know what I mean? So I try to introduce more Chinese gay history in the show to, um, to uh, read the whole, uh, to get some clues or to come, not necessarily compare, comparing, but to have a look of the Hong Kong too come uh, on different same e on same issue. For example, the gay marriage, what happened in Hong Kong and what happened in Germany, and like a comparative uh, exhibiting together. And I and I'm happy that there we have we still have spaces in Hong Kong to talk about gay issues. Though we never get we didn't get uh, gay marriage uh, legalized yet. But it is ridiculous that they pass the tax and they pass the housing allowance, but they never uh, meet the gay marriage. <laughs> so we are still fighting on that. And I hope, and for example, we see, we saw the success in China, in Taiwan and in Japan. And we hope that we can learn from this country and to push the gay activism further in Hong Kong. And also, uh, we have a very special group in Hong Kong that I, in, that I invite them to join this show and to tell their story as the Migrant Pride, because we have a lot of migrant workers in Hong Kong and they have the first migrant gay organization in Hong Kong. And there are a lot of story, not only gay people join that, but also those females who are suffering from uh, uh, domestic abuse are seeking help in these organization. And you know, they are, they, mm, you may think that they are weak in Hong Kong, but when they come together, they are so strong. And I don't, I want people also look at these migrants, pride, sisters and brothers, but not those pink economic, very rich and educated gay people. So I also introduced the migrant pride um, friends into this show. <laughs> And, and I, uh, yes, this is some other workshop. Because of the times that I'm going directly into the Hong Kong Artists Union thing, because uh, 
So we have the Hong Kong Federation of Trade Unions. This is the first unions in Hong Kong established. But after years, they are now pro-government. And then union is a very hot topic in Hong Kong. And back in 2018, uh, we and other artists formed the Hong Kong Artist Union. At first, we are just an artist group to see if this is just a joke to carry out labor rights among artists in Hong Kong. Because we have, because the, the working environment for Hong Kong artists is really uncivilized. <laughs> we don't have insurance. We don't, not every one of us know to sign contract, but we are dealing with a lot of art activities in Hong Kong. It is unbelievably sad and unbelievably uh, not civilized compared to many countries. So we come up together and then try to do something. But then after the, uh, the NTE-led movement last year, we also, uh, focus on a lot of works to fight for freedom of speech. And uh, Hong Kong Artists Union is a group of artists that want to build a better ecosystem and also to strive for basic rights for art laboring. We're not talking about art admin or gallerist, but, uh, but uh, artists, those who make arts. We want to establish our uh, a reasonable working environment for ourselves. So the reason why I mentioned Hong Kong Artists Union, it's because we also tackle issues of sexual harassment and also sexual discrimination among the industry. And this is the first ever uh, response or action that artists come together and uh, take action on it and tackle on this problem. Even though we know that these sexual harassment cases and other discrimination cases are existing for many years. But this is the first time we ever have successfully dealing with it, put them into court and then, and then uh, to file them and then to gain back what we deserve and to get the justice. So I would like to introduce the Hong Kong Artists Union to you all. We do exhibitions, we do research, and then we write articles for advocacy. And then we do education for the artists to protect themselves, not only about money, but also, uh, as I said, gender issues, you're being paid fairly. Uh, yes. So if you would like to collab with us or take a look of what we are doing, even though we are very in improvise <laughs> because it's we are a group of artists that are uneasy to manage <laughs> and then we work according to our mood but still we have a lot of things going on and you can follow us on facebook page or uh, email us and um, and i we found that fortunately we keep our members lead and member list anonymous so that we are still safe now but this week, there's a news that the Hong Kong government will overtake uh, the unions, which are suspected to betray the countries. So we don't know how long we are going to exist. But um, so far, you can still find us on a Facebook page and different medias or interviews. And we are happy to collab with other countries, artists to see, uh, to learn mainly to learn because we're so green yeah and last but not least i am now having an exhibition and it's it's uh projects of my uh, is my research projects about artist made self-portraiture and i also investigate on the gender performativity that are uh, executed in these uh these artworks so except these found objects I showed in the beginning of the sharing, there's also other words uh, discussing about our camouflage, our performance, and also the digital language of how we uh, analyze ourself, our digital self, and also our face, something like that in these work. So you can see, uh, this is the latest work I, try to make my own face with a machine learning program. It's not made of nothing. 
because you know uh, we can find many model online now that you feed them with a lot of your uh, selfies and then they will generate a, a totally new selfie but instead of that I try to adapt my many faces on one master photos to made a me from uh, made my made a me with me but it's not me the outcome so the the outcome as I want to emphasize the uncanny and weird outcome that even when you think that machine learning it's a fair you know it's very objective but the outcome it's not that uh, it's not close to the reality so you can find more works on my website and also for this latest work and also you can find me on Instagram and always inbox me to talk about things or if you Hong Kong any Hong Kong artist <laughs> if you are watching the YouTube I uh, for sure you will know how to find me to talk about yes so thank you very much thank you so much KY um, that was a really inspiring talk I think we should now move on to um, Ho Yi Ting. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ho Yi Ting. Can everybody hear my voice? Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, from a friend, Mia and Jung, Jung Young and uh, Emily. Uh, who organized a wonderful panel discussion. So before I show my uh, slide, I would like to briefly to introduce myself. Basically, I'm an artist, but I also do uh, research about a uh, woman uh, under different uh, social society and also under different economic uh, structure. So uh, it's also uh, during about uh, history and also uh, research about uh, what uh, woman situation in nowadays. And uh, yeah, I start to share my screen. Yeah, uh, this is... Uh, the longest uh, project, which I start from uh, 2015. Uh, actually, the earlier motivation was actually uh, from a strong idea. Uh, when I was preparing uh, exhibition in 2015, in, also in 14. And that time I was very dissatisfied about uh, our uh, assistant. And uh, I wondering um, most uh, gallery and uh, institutes, they prefer doing uh, uh, exhibition making. So this uh, the reason uh, I start to do the, uh, the process based project on site and uh, invite uh, participants to join a kind of a workshop. And also we run a, a different form of uh, activity like cooking, writing workshop. It's a, a sewing field. It's an ongoing feminine writing project since 2015. Uh, actually, uh, during our process of art making, we use the uh, archive of women's school in Taiwan during the Japanese occupation. We use uh, embroidery as a way to invite people respond on history and also invite them uh, get involved in the history. And usually uh, we exchange two or three audience or participant to remaking the same historical photo. So you can see uh, this uh, black and white photo 
background is a flower arrangement class in girls' school during the Japanese occupation. The, uh, the reconstruct the new image, it uh, recover the uh, old photographs. It means the historical image must be defaced first. So it's kind of the, the history relate to body on site and the related the time repeatedly and the uh, activity uh, movement. So uh, this project uh, actually uh, for us is not only a way to resist the assistance, and also uh, we resist uh, the photograph uh, as uh, become the uh, fact and also has been written. So uh, for me, it's not uh, shouldn't uh, be one way historical uh, narrative. So this photo uh, also show the how uh, the authority power uh, to uh, that the student uh, study like a uh, homework in a class. So uh, it's actually I also a graduate from the girls school like a kind. So uh, we follow the many rule in the women's school. So uh, that's why uh, uh, it's uh, the, the reason I uh, continue this project until now. And this is a uh, performance installation. Uh, we embody the test on uh, the screen. The test about uh, old female labor, female labor song during uh, 1950 to 1980, uh, during the Taiwanese e e economy miracle age. So uh, everyone uh, engaged the, 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 the certain music and the test. Uh, this is uh, one of the participants. She stitched her, her self poetry and also she make a beautiful like a mirror image as uh, the, the, the process. It's a sand uh, sewing project. Uh, we did, uh, we collaborate with uh, five, Taipei Fire Museum in 2019. And uh, every, hey, sorry. Every time uh, we invite different uh, community and also different audience to, uh, to respond and to continue make a question to the historical photo. And also we, uh, sign the contract with, between uh, museum participating and artists. After three months, uh, audience and participant can receive the artwork. So uh, we also uh, run different economic rule and structure uh, from different side from different uh, organization and institute. This is uh, one of the photo uh, from the exhibition in uh, Tifan. Uh, in the uh, in the last time, uh, we share the the experience. And the museum become the co-learning and uh, sharing space. So the participant also can uh, share their uh, knowledge for each other and also and they learn uh, from each other about a specific uh, technique. This uh, uh, 
is a, a process of the image from the persisting This is a This is one of participants uh, who choose this archive because uh, she says she want to uh, working on the window and create recreate more space from this uh, historical photograph. This another participant, she uh, want to recreate the flower blossom in uh, the, the, the side. This is, uh, this is uh, the project collaborate with the, the independent magazine uh, in Taiwan and also uh, collaborate uh, with cultural lab in Taiwan. And um, uh, we invite the uh, audience to bring their, to provide their uh, family photograph so they can freely to uh, engage and to evolve this uh, uh, family photo. So when I talk with uh, the participant, we discuss why they choose this photograph. Some of them, they, they uh, say, because they want to remember about uh, her grandmother and also uh, want to make a gift for her mother. This is uh, also the, the workshop uh, we uh, co-collaborate in the cultural lab. Uh, it's a uh, exhibition photo, exhibition document uh, in uh, 2018 and I participating in uh, event in festival in New Zealand. The space used to be uh, a container to uh, storage the, the, the salmon. So uh, we organize an uh, event during the festival, and uh, we we using we, we using the uh, Korean girl education photograph uh, from the, the World Museum. So we got the permission from the museum and. Uh, we invite uh, some of students from uh, the art school. The one of participating, she is a Maori girl. This is a exhibition view uh, in Mexico City. And uh, the space also used to be a factory. And uh, we invite a girl, woman from Mexico City, and we uh, work in the, the, the old uh, authority, the, uh, no, no, the old uh, factory space. Uh, it's also the exhibition view from Mexico City. This is uh, uh, the workshop uh, in South France in 2019. So uh, it, the, the founder, she found a, quite a beautiful desk from uh, the old time in France. So uh, the people can engage uh, in this space. It's also the, the sewing project 
uh, which uh, we we collaborate with uh, the space in Singapore. The space used to be uh, the Chinese girls' school in uh, downtown. So the, the space already uh, abandoned. So the founder to find uh, the space become an exhibition place. So we also display, we print out the archive about uh, the colonial image and the girl and gender Im image. So in, in, in Singapore, the people are uh, more random. Uh, they, they wrote, they stitch many tests like, uh, oh, wow, well, this is uh, serious. <laughs> it's a uh, love, it's a, uh, where is uh, the place? Who am I? Something like this. So not only stitch uh, like clothes, hair, Uh, I would like to show different another uh, project uh, which I uh, did the research in Tokyo and it's about uh, uh, how women's uh, how Japanese mothers condition under the labor social labor's uh, policy and uh, when I uh, went to Japan I talked to some woman, some Japanese mother. They say uh, they have to prepare uh, the meal box for their children in kindergarten every day. So I wondering uh, if if uh, if it's a the is a reality. So I got the funding from. Uh, Taipei Artist Beach and uh, Tokyo on the side. So I went to Japan for my research for three months. After three months, we made the, the workshop and we stitch, we cooking together and we, we use the old uh, colonial food package for our reference to, to recreate the uh, the full box again. So after I came back from Japan, I re researched more about uh, the history between uh, Taiwan and Japan and uh, how women uh, still uh, display the, how women uh, re-question about their position in the contemporary uh, society. So I interview some of women workers in the uh, food milk box factory in uh, Taiwan Railroad. So it's a video, it's a short film I work. So maybe later I will uh, show the video if we have another time. And then this is uh, one of uh, we recreate the uh, full uh, image, full box, full cover from the colonial period. Actually, the the small test it, it's uh, it's uh, from Nanjing Station, so it's uh, all kind of the the common memory in uh, Asia. The videos also uh, interview with the, the manager and also the worker in the factory. Uh, they talk about how many random bugs they made a day and uh, how many hours and how the gender different work, work uh, on the assembly line. So it's a, it's a combined uh, memory and historical uh, material and also the labor action in the factory. And the video also participating in the exhibition in the 20th Central Museum in Kanazawa in Japan. Mm.
this is one of the inspiration view in Japan. Uh, I think before I finish uh, my presentation, I would like to uh, read a very short text from the, the movement. Uh, it's a social history writing movement from, uh, from Europe. So it's published with the book, the handbook wrote by Savan Linquis is called Dig Where You Stand. And uh, he said, history is important because the result of history are still with us. The past still generate power. The past still generate profit. Yeah, thank you for your listening. Uh, very briefly <laughs> introduced. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yiting. Um, I think now uh, um, we should move on to um, Qian. Um, the next is Qian Wu, and then we'll have a, a further discussion, of course, during the round table. So uh, welcome, Qian. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'll just share my presentation in the start. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, first, I'm Jianu. Uh, an artist and in performance theater and visual arts and also an activist based in Seoul. And in today's presentation, I'll talk about some performative arts I participated in as a member of Femi Dang Dang and my other works, which are centered on genderized bodies of women. So Femi Dang Dang is a feminist group which started after a femicide Gangnam Station murder case in 2016. It was called femicide because it was a gender-based hate crime. Ten days after the incident, they organized a mirror action, which was a funeral march for the victim. We held mirrors in our hands to symbolize that the murder was gender-specific and misogynic, and that any woman, any woman could have been target of the crime. And this was the first uh, performance slash protest uh, Femi Dang Dang initiated. And after this, Femi Dang Dang organized numerous feminist protests and performances. And one of them was I Want a President Who. Uh, this action inspired, was inspired by the poem I Want a President, which is famous for the line, I want a dyke president. As you know, we encouraged people to fill in the blank so that they could express their opinions as a feminist, queer and minorities on what kind of president they'd like to have. Uh, I personally wrote, I want a feminine president whom I want to have sex with. I had never known what the consequences of this mischievous picture would be at the time. So I'll show you one clip. Uh -huh. Yes, there were backlashes. And back again. Uh, there were backlashes. There were thousands of online comments about how we looked, how we dressed, and some even said, 
uh, they want us to die or be raped. Um, okay, this was the documentary, a clip from the Fearless and Vulnerable, the documentary. Okay, um, I knew that there will be consequences as being a proud feminist who are not afraid to talk about my own desires, sexuality, and our bodies. And this was not the first time we had to face serious backlashes. The first time I clearly noticed the genderization as a protest on the street was the year 2016. Around the time in South Korea, we took ourselves to the streets to protest for the impeachment for the former president Park, uh, as you are aware of. Uh, but not all the citizens were there. Uh, all the citizens there were acknowledged as fellow citizens. Not only the President Park, but we as uh, women protesters were also attacked at the scene for being a woman and a feminist. As women protesters, we had to face hate speeches, sexual harassment and threats of violence. So we came up with this Femi Zone, which means feminist zone where the feminists can be safe at the site of resistance. But soon we realized it cannot be a safe space either unless we fight back. So this is a manual we had to make to deal with hate speeches, sexual harassment and physical violence. Feminists had to fight one body to body for just being there as a fellow protesters. Some people just took pictures of us, some groped us, and others made jokes or verbally abused us online. Um, after, after that, after that, my fellow Femidangda members and I uh, directed a performance called My Body Is Not Illegal. This performance was about facing their faces of women who choose to get abortions. We collaborated with Women on Rap and Bom Alarm and 125 women swallowed the mifedrine pills or vitamin D supplements that look exactly the same as the pill. 125 was the number that 3000 divided by 24 hours which is the number of women who choose to get abortion in Korea every day. Um, through this journey as an activist, I got exhausted by these genderized backlashes. It was not only me. At that time, many feminism activists in Korea were experiencing burnout. As an artist, I felt certain types of protests exhaust my inspiration to interpret this world. After all, after all, it was too dull repeating same slogans over and over again while the lives and struggles of women were all different. The women were telling stories about their own experiences with the abortion. Many of them told, it's the first time I ever talked openly about this. Uh, the process of gathering and organizing people to make our voices heard made each individuals anonymous by its nature. Individuals' voices and faces were easily erased in the name of the great cause of feminism, such as illegalized abortion. So I directed and performed Gacha Abortion Pills performance series. This performance was also about facing real women's faces around the abortion performance, abortion experience, concent concentrating on the elements of bodies being there as herself and the gaze to the audience. The woman take one random capsule out of the gacha machine, uh, the gumbo machine, and she asks the audience to give her a random word. Using this word, she makes up two contradicting sentences to confuse people. She tells a story with the sentence, these are few truths and lies about. She reads the story about abortion and this story also can be either true or false. At the end, 
She swallows the pill that looks like mephigin, uh, an, an abortion pill. Um, these layers blur the border of truth and lies and function to protect the performer. And performer stares at the audience, so the guilt is not theirs. The gaze prote project the guilt on the audience. So there is one clip of a performance sketch of gotcha abortion pills. <sighs> This was the sketch from the performance. So, after the burnout, uh, my main focuses were two things. This is a matter of a survival. Two, we need to face each other's faces because we are not all the same as feminists. All bodies are unique individuals who actually have names. In this process, I worked on a cartoon named Small Voices, which illuminates the hidden side of the Me Too movement. It says, you should be heard, not because the predator was famous, nor the case was provo provocative. What's important is you, your voice. Uh, next. I also co-directed a documentary named Why Not Dance, where I interviewed the 90s activist artist group Ip Kim and the family Dangdang members together. They shared the series of experiences over the time gap. Ip Kim was physically attacked by a group of old men 
when they were preparing for the outdoor exhibition. So they had to remove their walks. They gave up on an outdoor dance party, which were to celebrate femininity. In the end of, a, of the in the end of the documentary, Femi Dong Dong members gather at the same location and have a dance performance. Chung Jong Yup of Ik Kim says it was a matter of survival. I agree with her. During the dance performance, there were an old man approached to me and all of a sudden punched me. I demanded him an apology and I I even danced with it, danced with him after that. And then he just suggested me that come over to my house. So <laughs> it says a lot, right? Lastly, uh, I wrote and directed a series of plays, Daughters of Megalia and 2020 Daughters of Megalia, which depicted the lives and events of this feminist movement in Korea and the survival of women amidst it. Megalia is the name of the website which triggered new feminism movement in Korea from 2015. At this period, um, all I wanted was not witnessing another death. So many people, especially feminists, left us over the past few years in Korea and Korean feminists were divided based on their beliefs and there was so much hate. And you see, this is Rebecca from Women on Web from the last round table. <laughs> um, at the end of the show, the characters touch each other, see eye to eye and dance on top of the grave at the burning ruins. I hope that I hoped that if we could touch and see each other, we would know and feel there are real people out there with real faces and bodies, and maybe we can hope for each other's survival. So 2020 Daughters of Megalia was about mourning for who left us. This is uh, some of the poem, uh, The Power Ad from, uh, by Adrian Rich. Uh, in the last scene, uh, the characters recite this poem with dancing and touching each other. I'll, so I'll finish my presentation with a video and reading this. Today, I was reading about Marie Curie. She must have known she suffered from radiation sickness. Her body bombarded for years by the element she had purified. It seems she denied to the end the source of the ca ca cataracts on her eyes, the cracked and separating skin of her finger ends, till she could no longer hold a test tube or a pencil. She died a famous woman denying her wounds, denying her wounds came from the same source as her power.
나를 오늘 많이 키리에 대해 읽고 있었다. 그녀는 당사한 병으로 아프다는 것을 분명 알고 있었다. 자신이 정장한 성분으로 인해 3년 동안 남아진 거다. I have this ongoing project um, since then I have focused uh, my work on young women's depression and their suicidal thoughts. I'm now prepare preparing for directing a new play called A Short Life Girl's Struggle and I'm also working on launching the Femi Zhang Zhang Archive project which was triggered by the fact that feminist movements and activism don't get as much attention as it should get. For example, the Femi Zone was hardly documented by the mainstream researchers or writers who documented the 2016 impeachment protest. So this is me now. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you so much, Jian. Um, and thank you, um, Yiting, KY, also for your uh, wonderful presentations. I think we should do another uh, round of applause for everybody. Um, so I hope everyone's uh, clapping at home <laughs> while watching. Um, uh, thank you for, uh, there is so much material here and also um, so many different lines of, of solidarity and camaraderie that I can also see uh, between your different projects, despite being in different um, um, locations around East Asia. And um, I think uh, uh, maybe just to um, jump off, off from um, Qian's presentation, Qian, you had, um, there are quite a few citations of earlier um, activist artist groups um, that you're sort of working with or working uh, uh, by being inspired by in your in your projects, um, such as, um, you know, even the translation and use of Adrian Rich's uh, poem, um, for example, in um, in your last performance. Um, and then also the um, the collaboration you do with um, Ip Kim also. Um, and so um, I'm quite curious to hear maybe from everybody about um, the importance to you about connecting to and um, showing the lines between earlier artist activist movements with your own practice in, um, in contemporary um, creation and um, protest and resistance. So maybe uh, maybe if we can begin with Jian to talk a little bit about um, your like you know why was it important to you to uh, connect to the these other um, generations of um, artist activists and then maybe we can open this up to um, KY and ET as well. Um, the connection to the former or earlier movements of artists is important is why is uh, because um, uh, when I first started my uh, career as activist or artist, uh, it felt very lonely or isolated because everything seems uh, the first, but the first on the universe. Uh, we, we need, uh, as Femi Dang Dang members, with Femi Dang Dang members, we need a reference. We need some footsteps of former uh, senior, uh, activists, artists. So I think it's more of a uh, knowing uh, uh, to say uh, to um, uh, as the poem Adrian Rich the power says. Uh, knowing your power is from the same source as your um, wounds. That means. That means to me that knowing your power is power comes from the your um, struggles, um, uh, trying to connect, trying to be connected with others, trying to be connected with uh, the other souls, other feminists, other artists. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's my answer. <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, 
uh, KY or Eting, do you also want to talk a little bit about um, the sort of transgenerational, um, uh, the role of um, connections across generations for art and activism in your practice? Um, instead of uh, working with uh, artists, feminist artists or feminist activists in Hong Kong, well, I have to say that the number of feminist artists and activists in Hong Kong, it's not many and their circle is really small and we basically know each other and it forms a support group, like a peer supporting each other. But I enjoy working with general public, to be honest, like everyone is activist and feminist in my point of view, because I spend a lot of time to are uh, to investigate and research on what we can do on daily life in every different sector, not necessarily producing art pieces, but how to exercise these justice and also these fairness in our little everyday little choices. So it's, it's a matter of making choices and everyone can do so and everyone can join us and everyone can stand up and say they are feminist. For example, moms and teachers and students, these are general public that they may not find suitable friends to talk with those unfair things they encounter or the uh, harassment they ha need to deal with in working place. But I think when we organize these um, uh, really petitionary, uh, yeah, partic participationary or engaging uh, activities, including exercise or workshops or talks or sharing, you can always find someone uh, that suddenly they know that, oh, there is someone else out there you can talk with or you can work with and we share the same values and thoughts. So for me, the most precious things I gain from exercising, uh, you know, resistant bodies is that I connect with many different other bodies and we can, we are strong. It's not we can be strong, it's we are strong and then people see our power. Um. Eating, you actually um, work quite a bit with um, uh, documentation, like photography from the past. Um, I think also there's a reference to a lot of the traditional um, work that's been relegated to women, right? Such as embroidery. That's something that we consider to be like a woman's work, I guess, or woman's craft. Um, and so I'm, uh, I'm also interested in, in um, hearing also about how it is that you are taking sort of these more um, uh, the ways in which you're trying to reinvent the past or intervene upon uh, past associations through your work and how you use the medium of photography. You mentioned this in your presentation, but I'd like to hear a little bit more, as well as um, the, reappropriate, the reappropriation, I guess, of um, traditional crafts to, um, to make a very contemporary and current and urgent um, activist uh, statement. I think the, uh, it's also quite important for me to make a, a possibility to uh, make a more dialogue with people. So that's why uh, when I start to collaborate with uh, community, woman community and the other audience from uh, 2009. So it's uh, quite different from my earlier work because I use uh, video and uh, performance video art as well. Uh, I think the, the, it's quite important to, uh, to make uh, the um, new uh, vision and the new possibility for the, uh, the art between craft and uh, uh, traditional embroidery because uh, mostly uh, I, I, uh, I learned from art school, many uh, 
professor and the teacher, they, they want uh, to talk about the class in a uh, school in a lot of time. So it, uh, it, uh, it's uh, more like uh, how we spend uh, more time, not only uh, uh, we just uh, use a camera and catch uh, the one photograph. So that's so why I uh, prefer to uh, uh, prefer to perform or uh, use a body on site, and uh, we spend time with the uh, people, and also connect to the human body, the also humanity, and uh, uh, also the past. I thought one of the most um, inspiring things about um, your project with the sewing fields, and I think this also goes further on into your consideration about the white uniform project that you're doing, is rethinking um, the economic systems that organize, yes. um, you know, compensation and um, um, and also valuing uh, the kind of work, the artwork, also that um, that people do. And um, I thought that uh, I was really fascinated by this idea also that within the workshop uh, mode that you also think about what are more innovative or um, uh, more fair ways of offering compensation for the participants of these workshops. And um, I was wondering if any of these, um, what are some of your findings from that? What are some modes of um, valuing artwork or valuing labor that you've learned through these workshops that we can maybe try to applied to different um, situations or maybe to um, even more in a global way that would be nice to see uh, happening yes uh, I, I recently i read uh, the the handbook the, uh, which i show you guys uh, from my last uh, slide it's a uh, quite uh, inspire me because uh, it's also uh, if they recreate a new image of a labor and new image uh, from the past. So it's, uh, it, it, it's a way to uh, redealing with uh, what is the history also. And uh, also uh, we, we can uh, not only follow the, the rule, only one rule from the society, but also like uh, uh, it's always the uh, same, story uh, from everywhere like uh, manufacturing in everywhere the, uh, the company the international company always finding the cheaper uh, cheaper human resource cheaper place so it's kind of uh, this uh, from my same question uh, uh, from uh, myself and also uh, I would like to uh, learning and uh, hearing more about uh, our country, especially women. Yeah, I love this idea of, the, of your workshops as being kind of a miniature social experiments or a space for play and, and an inquiry into these, um, mm. into rethinking how labor functions. Um, and I guess this also, um, um, I guess in a lot of ways, of course, you know, um, activist art, feminist art, um, it both um, can be a way of documenting um, um, certain um, widespread cultural movements, but it can also be, of course, it also has the intention of catalyzing cultural movements. And um, there's actually a question from the audience that's um, to um, KY, but um, I think that also after maybe KY answers, I'd be curious to hear about this from the other um, artists as well. Um, the question asks, um, uh, after nearly a decade of your practice, do you think the general public and institutions react on your work that relates to feminist uh, women's labor issues um, that ha has this changed in a more progressive manner? Matter? Uh, for general public, yes. And for the uh, in independent art space, yes. But for our uh, New, new private museum, yes, but for the governmental institutions and museum, for example, those who are managed by the Hong Kong government, um, there's an incident happened recently from a senior art activist, feminist artist, uh, female man, that is an, an exhibition, it's a huge exhibition, there's a group show 
under the curatorial theme of 80 to 90, 80s to 90s uh, Hong Kong art history, something like that. And then there's one section, it's talking about feminist work in Hong Kong and they only pick one of her work. She's the only work that representing the feminism movement in Hong Kong in art history, in Hong Kong art history in these uh, uh, 30 years. But then it is a very cute work she made a vagina marquee for an uh, actress to wear the marquee looks like vagina and walk around the city and interact and take a video and also put the, the, the fluffy vagina in the museum. But for how the Hong Kong Museum of Art treat her work is to put signage to forbidden uh, audience under 18 to visit her works and then she protests a few times request to change the uh, sentence on the sign maybe you can and she suggests that you can watch this work with parental guidance or you can say that these work contain sensitive elements but definitely not it is prohibited for 18 for viewers under 18. So you can say this just happened like last month and is in the one of the biggest uh, public funded museums in Hong Kong who claimed, who just got renovated and claimed that it represents the latest contemporary art in the world. And they borrow, you know, surrealism painting from Pompidou this month. And, but then they treat artworks like this. And for sure, they would not pick artworks which is provocative and with women bodies in any of them shows. So, uh, and I, I participated in few government exhibitions before, but uh, they didn't directly say that it is better for you not to show these irritative things, but you will know their preference of what they prefer you to show. And for galleries, they since I think it was worse now, even worse now, they asked me to do something less political because, you know, political can mean a lot of things. Even when you, maybe you do gender, they didn't like gender issue anyway. So if you're not talking about gender politics, if you talk about other politics, it is even dangerous now. So in any way, you shouldn't talk something that is related to <laughs> society or talk it in an ambiguous way or fake way and do not mention it in the interview. Only you and the buyer know it and that's it. Yeah, so you, we need to walk a very uh, indirect way to, to, to talk about what we want to talk now. Yeah. What you're describing about talking in a very indirect way uh, makes me think back to um, the line that comes up in um, Qian's uh, um, performance of um, Gotcha Abortion Pills, where it's um, this is the truth or this is the lie. Um, and then always having these contradictory statements to uh, using contradiction as a way to maybe tell a story, but also to not um, um, be subjected to more violence because of the fact that you're sharing the story, um, which I found really moving. Um, Jian, uh, in you know 2021, this year finally, uh, abortion is being decri is decriminalized in South Korea, which is kind of a might be a shocking statistic for um, people to know. Um, and but I was thinking about even though um, Korea has criminalized abortion up until uh, this year, um, that even in the United States, where of course you know like the Roe versus Wade occurred, you know uh, half a century ago, that there's still not enough women sharing their stories of abortion, and so um, in in a lot of ways, um, your work is still absolutely is still extremely relevant outside of the legalistic issue, um, because there is this um, it offers kind of a platform for sharing stories. Um, and so I guess I'm also curious to hear a little bit about how you see the meaning of your work being affected by the change in law. Um, and also if you also see um, a change in um, more general public's, uh, the more general public's reaction to your work um, in the past year. Uh, gotcha Abortion Pills was the uh, later version of the former, my my body is not illegal performance. It was with uh, 
It was Femi Dangdang's work, collaborative work with uh, Women on Web and Warm Alarm. And we uh, actually took Mifujin pills, which was illegal at that point in Korea. And uh, 125 women were gathered to just protect each other because some swallowed uh, vitamin pills, some swallowed mif mifagin pills. So it looked the same. And even if the uh, police force knows who swallowed the real pills, uh, it is not illegal because at, uh, it's uh, forbidden to look uh, an individual's medical history. So uh, nobody can know that I am pregnant or not. So that site for that moment is uh, like a uh, free, free spot from the law. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've, I've, I have, uh, uh, I have, been interested in those kinds of functions, uh, devices to make women uh, more more protected, more safe, and uh, uh, as a solidarity means of solidarity. So after that, the gacha abortion pills was like that, even more layers. And this is true. This is false. Nobody should know about that. And uh, I personally feel that a uh, human body is the greatest vessel for this performance movement because um, when a human being is in front of you, then you feel that somebody is there staring at me. The power of that is so powerful that um, the guilt, the scarlet letter that society puts women uh, who choose to get an abortion is at that moment uh, goes away. So I, I thought that was the power of my work. And after the performance, my body is not illegal. Actually the, um, Protestant newspaper in USA wrote about us, like 125 women of Satan swallowed the abortion pills in South Korea, like that. <laughs> and um, some of the audience uh, watched the gacha abortion pills who were men actually felt um, Intimidate, said intimidated by the gays. So I thought, yeah, this worked. <laughs> I thought that. Um, I think uh, since we're speaking about the gays, um, one of the questions, I'm obviously in the Netherlands, uh, whereas you are in uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and uh, Korea, um, South Korea. And um, so I have to always uh, think a little bit about um, uh, the reception of Asian artists, East Asian artists through the Western gaze is something that is, um, because that's often, you know, being here in Europe and also having grown up in the United States, I can't help but have that Western gaze, of, of course, too. Um, and one of the things that I think um, as an artist from East Asia and also one that's working specifically with feminist um, topics in their work, that you that must be something that you're trying to navigate between um, having producing artwork that the West might be quite receptive to um, because of the fact that it, there's a critique made of sort of the local government policies or local governing bodies that the West is sort of able to say, oh, look, we don't have that issue. Um, on the other hand, while nonetheless, of course, at the core, you are also doing activist work and therefore very much do want to change those things that are oppressive or patriarchal in the societies that you're in. And so I'm curious about that sort of tension, if that plays out between artist and activist, um, alongside also um, how much are you um, 
uh, how much is the reception of a Western gaze, um, something that uh, you both um, look for, but also feel a bit um, self-conscious about. I mean, I bring this up because one of the things that certainly comes up in terms of translation or in, in poetry translation, there was a recent discussion between two translators, one of whom translates from Korean to English, Anton Hur and Nick Glastonbury, who translates from Turkish to English. And they talked about how uh, difficult it is to publish books that are in translation unless they fall into the trauma porn industrial complex, which is basically um, literature that talks about the oppressiveness of the states um, under which um, that literature is being written. And so therefore kind of plays into a kind of self-satisfied notion of the West um, and sort of saying, well, we don't have those issues. Um, and so I just wondered, you know, being an artist, looking for global solidarity, also looking, of course, to connect across the world to an audience, um, if that's something that you find yourself thinking about and trying to find a way to navigate around. Was that a very, <laughs> it's, that was a very long question. I hope it wasn't too, uh, um, but yeah, I guess maybe trying to speak for, um, uh, like who is the audience for your work? Maybe that's the that's the way to think about it. And is the audience different between being an artist and being an activist? I would go first because this is uh, questions that we are being asked. We Hong Kong artists being asked recently during the Arts Week. You know, last week uh, many art happenings. Well. Actually, every year there's a lot of big art happening, international art happenings in Hong Kong, for example, Basel and auctions and things, and also M plus. And uh, the reason why we are being asked is because uh, this year we passed a we passed a national security law, and this year's Basel is the first ever fair happened after the law is established. And the atmosphere last week is like, we don't talk about this. And then we just focus on our uh, sellings and uh, exhibitions and uh, pretty things, you know, and the prize and things. But there are still some journalists want to uh, talk about why didn't we admit that something is changing now in Hong Kong? Ex especially for those who make art. And uh, when I talk with the journalist, I then I think about these questions again, that, well, actually it is, this question is good for us to be prepared that one day we can no longer make art. And, uh, uh, and as long as we do not constrain ourselves to make art, we can make anything. And after you create something, you can interpret it in any terms or in any forms or in any mediums, but we can find something to work with or to do or to execute. And it's pretty much an, a very respectable artist in Hong Kong, Luke, Luke Ching Chin Wai. And he doesn't uh, consider himself it's making art, but because he graduated from art school, so everything he did it's considered as art when he uh, when he published it. For example, he uh, changed the ashtray of every rubbish bin in Hong Kong so that the 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 street uh, cleaning workers or cleaning ladies only need to take out the ashtray to clean it instead of taking the whole rubbish bin, a very large one, very heavy one, and to clean the ash. So a very little act, and uh, for example, she put in basketball and write that this is gift economy. And then to encourage people to share things together and to, uh, to come up with uh, uh, a rules or a, uh, a game rules that is benefit for everyone. Something like that, very tiny. And then, so this, uh, her, his, his actions inspires me a lot that even one day I was being banned to make art, I can still find something to do with. And also I get inspiration and muse from those ladies I work with. They are, for example, security guard or they're cleaning ladies, they're hawkers, and, but still they, they put their creativity into their work. So if one day I would say, 
uh, you are a citizen or you are a civilian and you are a female all the time. So with these uh, identities, you can do a lot of things. So I don't necessarily frame myself in being an artist or an activist. As long as we saw something that is not a, not acceptable, then we can think of something to respond to. Kian or Iting, did you want to add anything to this? Um, as an activist, uh, it was more, uh, uh, there was more uh, opportunities to collaborate with uh, other countries, activists, and uh, of course with uh, the Western world's activists. So at that time, we have also struggled uh, with the, it can, this performance can be seen as a Western gaze. For example, uh, uh, the performance, this, uh, my body is not illegal. It was first uh, introduced to us as a performance in which a girl from Seoul is there and uh, the robot, a Netherland robot is, with Netherland robot comes to her and give her a pill and she swallows it. Uh, and the screen shows the Netherland doctor, uh, but not the soul to Amsterdam. So it, 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 it can be looked as a, a heroic Netherland people come to the, <laughs> Come to the very uncivilized South Korea soul people to give the pill, and we c didn't want us to look like that, so we changed the performance as this this form of solidarity. And uh, it's always the question that who is the audience? Because the general people, the general society, is. Uh, in 2021, S South Korea Seoul is maybe uh, if I do this po position, pose, then all of the backlashes came up because it, it means micro penis. So in the web, online, offline, and in this difficult, difficult time with the pandemic, uh, there can't, can't be no big protest. So the online uh, opinions getting, uh, became more important. So the online backlashes are so much in trouble right now in South Korea. So it, the general society, uh, if we uh, took our audience as a general society. We could, uh, I think we, we couldn't do the same work as we did or I did. So um, with fellow activists, with uh, fellow feminists, with fellow artists, with solidarity, I usually think of them as my audience. And Yiting, uh, who do you think of as your audience? <laughs> you can also not answer if you'd rather not to answer the question. I think uh, I will be my first audience. <laughs> Yeah. for myself because uh, we still uh, in struggle and uh, figure out of uh, our life and uh, we still dealing uh, with the uh, same situation and the political and uh, gender uh, discrimination still happen and uh, sexual harassment also happen in every way I think uh, it's um, uh, we be a 
artist and uh, uh, activism, I think it's, uh, it's more random to uh, to open uh, your uh, position and the angle to to deal with the, this uh, the society. Um, we've been talking a bit about, um, of course, and your work deals with quite, all three of you, your work uh, deals with quite um, um, intense and heavy topics about the different ways in which um, economics and um, misogynistic gazes um, and um, legislation um, rules and dictates how women's bodies uh, must be um, in different uh, um, East Asian um, nations. Um, but one of the things that really struck me also about all three of your work is how playful it also is. Um, there's also a lot of humor in your work. And, um, um, and I was wondering if you talk a little bit about the role of humor, maybe in um, making creating political art, uh, or also just creating art in general, and if not humor, um, I mean, I can imagine that maybe for eating it's less maybe explicit humor, but more about play or experiment, um, social engagement in a more experimental way too. Um, so I'm quite curious to hear about the role of humor um, and play in your work. Uh, I think the first uh, important thing is uh, uh, don't be take any pressures uh, when you uh, working with uh, other participants and you know, people and you know, audience because um, there, there's uh, not any uh, the responsibility to finish the, the, the any artwork, even the, the outcome. So uh, every time we we run the, the playful the, the workshop, is like we serve the the, the like a very strange or sci-fi food section for people. They, they were just laughing and enjoy. It. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a one of the uh, most motivation uh, uh, for me to do the, the active, act, activity between artists and the, the activity, yes. Um, and um, uh, KY too, in your, um, I mean, it's just your, um, the self-portrait project, there's a, there's a lot of humor there. I mean, it's also uh, um, the in artist residency video with you sitting with all the pillows and uh, blankets that have your faces from different periods and also in different kinds of, um, 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 in different kinds of modes, I guess also. Um, there's a lot of humor in that work. Um, and so, um, yeah, and also this, um, um, for when dealing with me too, that you also use the the wipe that cleans makeup off of. Um, there's also something. Um, uh, of course, it's an, a really important political statement and uh, quite powerful in terms of how women have to present themselves in the world. But at the same time, there's something humorous about using that material, like what we usually throw away to produce a quilt. Um, so I'm also curious about how you play with irony or with um, humor. My my personal work it's not the most humor. I collab with another artist. Uh, her name is Matt Ying Tong, and she is really humorous. <laughs> and we come up with an art collective called Come Inside, and that's how we play with young girl idol group images and persona to make parody of the art world. And that is that they those are the humorous work I got. But for myself, like the reason project of my self-portraiture, it's, it's actually how I tackle with the ego of being an artist or uh, how to manage to uh, not to be that self-absorbed when, when you're using your own body to make works. You sh you're, when you are the artist, and you are also the subject and you are also the object of your own work. Because I, my photography, I'm mainly using my body as the medium because at first I think that it is the, e the easiest way I get some you know, human body to play with. And then I don't, I'm not exploiting others' body, so I use my own body. But then after years of doing the same practice, I found that it's, uh, I should have investigated deeper into the subjectivity and objectivity relationship 
in my work. When I observe myself, uh, am I observe myself of being Wong Kai or am I observe myself as the artist Wong Kai So I think humor can give me a distance to be less uh, fragile when others people attack on my work or give comments about my appearance or my existence as a female in the world. So this is a very good practice for me to put down my ego and be less self-absorbed and look at the world more than look at yourself. Yeah. So humor, it's very powerful and it's a, it's a, I think it's the positive way that, uh, make you to be humble, yeah. And I was noting that um, also with your, um, um, is it called I Am Not Your Fortune or I'm Not Your Good Fortune project where you uh, made uh, these fortune cookies that uh, also represent your um, vagina, that that mm -hmm. also, that to me also connected um, uh, with um, how Qian uses um, the bubki, like the, um, the gumball machine, I guess, um, in order for uh, for the um, abortion pills to come out and also these stories of um, women who underwent abortion. And so I was also curious, I mean, that to me also reflected this kind of humor or playfulness too in dealing with a very heavy topic. Um, and so um, I wondered if you also noted that uh, resemblance and also to hear a little bit more about this decision to use the, the gumball mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. yeah, I think the humor is the one of the most key elements of the works because mm -hmm. like Kaying, I also uh, use myself as a uh, element of the performance or work of art. Uh, like it can be easily uh, self-exploit, exploitative, exploitive. So uh, it prevents the work to be so self-absorbed. So uh, last I, I told you guys about um, I, my audience is my fellow sisters, my fellow uh, feminists, but I, I'm not doing my work for the anti-feminists, not for the misogynist, but I enjoy like surprising them. I enjoy surprise and betray uh, general society's uh, expectance. So the gumbo machine, the gacha machine was a medium to do that, uh, like lying or like, deceiving betraying and uh, the like mischievous ways to just lighten the heavy uh, um, what he uh, heavy contents of the work. So I think it's funny to like crack uh, make make a crack to the everyday routine lives of the people. So I think Kain uh, wanted, I, I imagine uh, Kain also wanted to do the, um, find this resemblance and uh, wanted this effect. Yeah. Well, but I personally like eating's work a lot, like using, reappropriating the, his, the historical photo. I always, for like one of the work I showed in the early in the presentation that I reappropriate the images of Sun Yat Sen and uh, Song Qing Ling, it's talking about how these historical imagery are, are hiding the face of women, like we are not being seen in many histories. So. But this is a very serious topic that people and viewers may not get into the context that easily or they reject it to digest or to think about it. But with the art, artistic treatment and also some humorous uh, play, for example, stitching and performance, then people 
can find the entrance to enter our story and to know more about the history. So I, I like the work very much. <laughs> Me too. I want to see the real, real work in person, eating's work. I think I, I dream of a day where we could all uh, go and be a participant and, uh, um, and maybe bring uh, photos from our uh, um, either traumatic or uh, maybe also just a familial kind of histories and then embroider uh, all <laughs> kinds of things onto them. Um, I think we're out of time because it's five after uh, two. Um, this has been such an inspirational um, and uh, yeah, like just a eye-opening um, presentation. And I'm really grateful to the three of you for so openly sharing your work with us. Um, and again, thanks to um, Framer Framed and the University of Amsterdam for organizing this really uh, nice session and a nice way to show kind of solidarity um, across uh, feminists, um, with feminists across um, various uh, East Asian countries, of which there should be more, and also with the diaspora too that's over here. So thank you very much, um, Jian, Kaying, and Yi Ting.